What is up? Welcome to another Thursday Night Grind. My name is Matt and every Thursday night I go on to YouTube and I sharpen something on the bench at the American Edge, which is my sharpening business. You can learn more about that at AmericanEdgeSharpening.com. Today is July 2nd, 2020 and we are on episode 27 of the Thursday Night Grind. So make sure you go check the playlist and if you're interested in sharpening, there is a long and growing playlist of videos dedicated to how I sharpen stuff. Uh, and today we're going to be sharpening a Swiss Army knife, right? So I thought, first off, there's a lot of story behind this knife, uh, which we'll get into in a second. And the other thing is that it's a very common knife. So you could expect to see these coming across your bench. And the third thing is it's going to give us an opportunity to show the small knife attachment on the Edge Pro, uh, which I don't believe I've done yet on the Thursday Night Grind. Before I go into that in, in its entirety, I do want to shamelessly plug the Guild of Professional Sharpeners and everything going on over there because it has been a bang and week. And I just want to capture some highlights and I wrote some down for myself here so I would remember. Uh, one of them is I put out a video to the Guild about flattening the 120 stone. This is the 120 stone from Edge Pro. If you have any experience using this system, you might know that this stone is slightly more problematic to flatten. And I came up with what I believe to be a better way to do that. And I have put a video out to the guild on that. Uh, also, Doug has been crushing it on next door and he, um, he is at the tip of the spear on what's going on over there. And he has been keeping us plugged into that, uh, which is I think going to be very valuable for a lot of people from a marketing perspective. Uh, he has also, so you guys may know by now, certainly anyone in the guild knows or anyone who has taken the course in the guild called the Foundations for Success, that I am a systems thinker and I've, everything is combined in a weird way and it's all like everything is a system and we start thinking like that. We can design the systems to support one another and to be symbiotic. And uh, Doug has done, again, like he, he's awesome. He's, um, he, he, Put up a post about how he has changed his uh, workflow through his shop and and done a bunch of stuff that i you know it's adding value to my shop right like it's uh, it's funny i showed my wife and i'm like you know the, the student becomes the master like it's, it's awesome what's going on over there so um i've expressed my gratitude to doug but i know he was he i know you're he's going to be on the other end of this too and i, I appreciate you man Oh, and lastly, yo, this is awesome. I got WorkSharp on the phone. I got an interview in with WorkSharp. I spent 45 minutes talking to Josh and Kyle, and it wasn't like fluff like marketing. It was like, let's talk about belts. In fact, here's what we went into. Uh, first off, some background, like between WorkSharp and Derek's, like you might've known that, but to get it from the horse's mouth, like that was really cool. Uh, we talked a lot about belts and uh, that was one, I feel like that was a void of knowledge that I had around that system, belt sharpening in general. Like we, we covered the whole thing there. We talked about temperatures, like they have done a lot of work to ease our concern about ruining the temper of the knife when we're sharpening on a belt. And they've done, they took a scientific R&D approach to uh, to like give us some confidence that, you know, it, it's fine. We're doing it. We're, we're doing it right. As long as we're doing it. And we talked about the, the right ways to do that. Uh, we talked about beginner mistakes, especially on the blade grinding attachment. Uh, we talked about some selling points. If you're already experienced sharpener, like maybe you still want to invest in the blade grinding attachment, uh, the tool grinding attachment. Yeah, man, it's true. Like they're not making it anymore. Super bummer. I'm glad I have mine. Um, and maybe I'm hoping like if I someday I could be like this big influencer and we can tell them to please run another uh, manufacturing run of that because that thing is awesome. You, if you've watched my pruners, loppers, axes, hatchets videos, tool grinding attachment all day, man, all day. Oh, yeah, the field sharpener and hunters like how do we how do we combat that trend within the hunting community of going to disposable blade knives for field dressing? Uh, it, I'm not even a hunter, but I'm, I'm so passionate about it. Like I want to be a positive 
force for good in in stopping that and like please actually can we invest in a good knife like you invest in good glass and good guns and like can we invest in a high quality knife and then can we can we teach you how to use that their field sharpening system to maintain the knife during the hunt throughout the whole season in the middle of processing like uh, I, I don't know why I'm so passionate about that. I just, th this, this, uh, and Josh brought it up right away. Like, you know, like the handing down a knife from like grandfather to grandson, like it's a real thing, man. Like that, it matters. And if you've received a knife from an elder, be it a parent or otherwise, like that knife has way more value than what the list price on eBay is going to be. Right. And, and I, I, man, I just wish that I could influence the hunting community to throw away the disposable blades all in all together and like, and like do some research, find a good blade and then learn how to take care of it in the field. Lots more on that. We talked about air quality and, and Kyle threw some great marketing tips. Like he, he's singing my song over there. Like, uh, I, one thing I see a lot, I'm really concerned about is people getting into business and then like you know, buying ads to get started. Uh, and I just, for some reason that really like, no. And I was so happy that, uh, just when pinged on that, like he just started riffing all of like all the ways you got to do it, man. I love it. I love it. There's so much more there. And, and also we got it in the future. So sorry to go long there. I just think like that was a really cool interview. I'm, I'm so thankful that Josh and Kyle made the time to come on the line with me. That is already, I've already I put that, I immediately loaded that up to, um, to the guild. So those guys have already checked it out and they agree with me like, this is sweet. And, um, there's, there's a lot there, but anyway, I'm going to pull some nuggets out of that. Make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the bell because I am going to capture some highlights from that 45 minute talk. Uh, and I'll post them up on my channel. So you're, I think you're going to want to see those. So make sure you subscribe and check that out. Okay. So now, thank you. Thank you. I know that's what I just get so excited, man. Like I appreciate that. All right. Let's talk about this knife. This is the Victor Knox Swiss army knife. It is every, everyone has one almost right. Uh, but here's, here's some story on this blade, right? Like it, it's the, um, actually this is neat. I'm also using a new camera. And I can change the phone. Oh God, that's nice, isn't it? Um, I've, I've sharpened this knife before. This knife belongs to, I will, it's a friend, like somebody I really respect. And uh, she had it uh, recently up on the coast of Maine. And she got, if, you, if you're familiar with this, like what happens in the storms around here is the, all the lobster pots, uh, like they, they get all tangled up and then you get this like impossible to untie roll of, of fishing line and lobster pots and they end up on the beach. And if you're, if you look at it like a puzzle, there's an opportunity to harvest a lot of really usable line out of there. Uh, but it does not come without time, patience and some cutting. Uh, so this knife saw that. Uh, which is why it's in need of a fresh edge. And the first thing I'm going to do is clean it up. And in this case, you might have seen the, the like the, I'm calling gunk on it. I don't know what, it, there's probably a better word. I'm going to call it gunk, but I'm using, I'm using Goo Gone, like, <laughs> I feel like I should have some like super professional uh, something or other, but no, man, like as seen on TV and some people have written out to me like, yeah, dude, I use Goo Gone too. This stuff's crazy. And it's pulling that pitch off the blade real nice. Uh, especially like it's designed for like the tape residue that gets stuck on knives, which is very common. Uh, take, sometimes you got to work it a little bit, but I'm going to take another splash here. Get both sides. Gotta work it good. Hopefully we'll get a good shot here for you when it is. So if it was, if it's really bad, it's getting, it's a little, it's gonna take a little bit of work here. I'm gonna set it on the, on the bench. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go right to the overhead shot now, right? So this is uh, another little feature of some gear I'm working on. Bear with me as I 
do what I, if I were, hey, if I were uh, editing these out, this is the step that I would be editing out. But anyway, let's get an overhead shot. All right, so that is pretty cool, right? Get this out of the way. I'm gonna flash some light here. There's that blinding um, fluorescent light for you. But anyway, now I got. Now you can see like I'm going to have to work this a bit. I have in the past like let the goo gone kind of like sit for a little bit and then come back. I don't know how good your your view was going into this, but it is already remarkably better. There's like some black stuff on there and uh, just some tape residue. If I needed to, I could hit that with a on the um, uh, wire wheel, but that's fine. That's getting better. Okay. Okay, so now let's take a look at the small knife attachment. Uh, I already set it up and because I had to check, I wanted to check to make sure that it was the right tool for this job. And it turns out that it is. If I did not have it on there, I can get the flat. I like to use the flat part of the knife here for angle control. Uh, but you can see the blade doesn't, uh, if you just imagine that we're using the, not the small knife attachment, but the blade doesn't come to the edge here. So you either have to like kick the tip way out in order to sharpen the tip of the knife um, or get creative other ways. So anyway, that's where the small knife attachment comes in is that now I can get out to the tip much easier. I can even maybe zoom in a little bit for you here. Okay. Okay, so I don't know what else to say about that, but we are pretty much good to go. Okay, so there is an observation here to make, right? Like if I could get the flat, the flat part here, I can I can trust my angle control on the post, which is now out of view. Forgive the uh, experimentation here. I, th I feel like as I get the hang of this, this is going to be some valuable this will turn into more valuable footage, but the uh, point is I can get the flat on this side, but I, I can't get it on this side. So because of that, I need to just use the face of the blade, which it is a, you know, it's a thick spine tapered evenly all the way down to the edge. So it is not the same as this flat part over here. No biggie. And bear in mind too, I do have the magnet in, but it's uh, getting through this piece of, um, whatever plastic is makes it pretty weak. Okay, so let us use the Sharpie trick. And I've done this before. I mean, I did this knife before, right? I think I mentioned that. I don't remember what angle I did. For a while I was writing down like the angles that I would do on knives for, for when I get them back. But uh, just turned out to be not really worth it. Bear in mind too, that if you're using the small knife attachment, it adjusts the angle. I think it's, oh, you gotta go back and look. So, you know, this, this thing is a certain level proud of the table. So it's gonna be a few, I think it's three degrees difference, but check me on that. Don't just blindly trust me. So let's see what, come up a little bit. That's right about there. Okay. So th that was just um, in the, in the, with the hopes of like telling you just enough information but not boring you with too much, right? Like I was painting the existing bevel with Sharpie and then adjusting the height of the stone on the post so that I remove all of the Sharpie on the bevel because you want to be cut at the edge and now I'm matching what the whatever angle I put on it last time. I'm going to uh, check for a actually I'm going to do both sides both sides.
I don't know if you've checked out my 21 reasons to start a sharpening business, but I will, uh, sometimes I include it in the description. I'll try to remember to do that this time. All right, feeling a burr, got a burr, got a burr, got a burr. Okay, so now let's just double back to this side. But anyway, one of the uh, reasons that I really like the sharpening business model is that it's something that you can, I mean, I, I think I captured it on that list as something you can barter with, but it's also just, I think maybe I also include, it's just a way to be kind and like it's like everybody, you know, I've said before, like every human uses a cutting tool with very few exceptions. And I have a burr along the whole edge. So now I'm good with the stone, but I do need to set my height appropriately. And we're going to go to this view. Actually, oh yeah, zoom right in on that. All right. So now you guys have seen this shaft collar before. Uh, I'm going to slide that up. So that is my first stone. Now I need to, every next stone that goes in needs to be adjusted for the thickness of this, thickness of that stone. Um, I just put a fresh one on here, but the problem is, could be, as these stones are different thicknesses. Yeah, there we go. As these stones are different thicknesses, they will, cause a different angle on the edge of the knife. So that shaft collar right there corrects for that. All right, so that was the 220 stone. This knife was in good enough condition to start with the 220 stone. Let us back out to something more reasonable. Come over here. And 600. The progression I'm going to use is 220, 600, 1100, 4000, 6000. Oh, yeah, but okay, so as mentioned, the 21 reasons, like one thing that's awesome about much knife sharpening is that you can barter with it. And I did have a, I've forgotten so much that I've bartered for with knife sharpening, but it's a long list. And I <laughs> think, depending on, uh, depending on what, your background is like maybe the strangest one is midwifery services like my our midwife for my son's birth was a soup is a super cool person and uh also a sewer so we came to an agreement to barter some sharpening for her services not all of it obviously maybe not obviously but but the other thing is that this, I'm not going to charge for this. Like these people are so cool. Uh, they both, uh, the woman and the dude, uh, are just, just such awesome people. Like, I just feel like same with the, I might've mentioned that with a neighbor, like doing his lawnmower blade. I'm not going to charge him, man. He's so cool. Uh, if anything, there's like, if there's not that it won't come back to me, like it already has, right. This is me just trying to balance the scale, but. If anything, just if, if it comes down to it, just pay it forward, man. I know you will. On the 1100 stone here. And you might notice on these that they wear, like they get dirty in the middle, right? Like that in the middle of the stone is where the cutting is. So sometimes on smaller blades, especially when you're getting up into uh, like the choil region here or out at the tip, you may need to apply a little, just a little bit, like don't overdo it, but a little bit of torsional pressure here so that you actually cut with the, this, the, uh, this side of the stone rather than the middle of the stone. Don't overdo it. I hope you see that I'm adjusting each one of these and they are all just a little bit different. I feel like that is a, when precision work is what we're, what we're selling and what we're trying to deliver, that is something that is a critical add on to this tool. Oh, which reminds me like in that call with WorkSharp, Dude, they laid down 
a system that kept me up at night, like a sharpening system. Like you want to, uh, I don't know, like stay tuned to the channel because I'm, I might, I might, it's not going to take a huge investment for me to, to try that system that Kyle, actually Josh recommended it, mentioned it. Man. All right, just a few like honing pull strokes there. Now the, going on to the, that was a 4,000 grit diamond matrix stone. I have a 6,000 grit tape here on that. I do like to dry everything off. Those tapes are marketed as uh, to be used dry. All right, no pressure, right? I, I keep making this mistake. No pressure, just whew, pull, pull. When, it, when you, if you start pushing, you cut your tape, you know? But this is such a better way to do it. Even this, like it's, the point is we're not, we're not hogging off material, right? Like real, no pressure, no, no pressure right over here. Starting with pull strokes on this polishing tape and then still no pressure, but we can, um, yeah, pull strokes, I hope I said. And then once you do a nice pull down the whole blade, you can polish that edge and it's not catching. Okay, so that should be wicked sharp. It should also deliver a, yeah, let's see if we have, let's try this camera out. Oh, oh man, oh, that's beautiful. So cool. Yeah, that's an edge, okay. It's neat with the uh, the autofocus. It's gonna take me a little bit of work to make the best of that, but ooh, that's cool, man. Okay, so now that blade is sharp and ready to go home, and I am excited to be able to do that for her. So um, super, super cool. Let me see if I can kill this and do something like this. Rookie, rookie with the camera. Hey. <laughs> All right. Okay, awesome. So that concludes this Thursday night grind. I hope you got some value out of that. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the bell because there's a lot of more content coming out here. You can learn more about the sharpening business at americanedgesharpening.com and you can learn more about how to start your own sharpening business and all of the so many reasons to do it. And uh, that is at guildofsharpeners.org. And uh, that's it for tonight. So thanks so much. Cheers.